Yeah, hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So, it looks to be a grease deal is closer than it's ever been. Uh, the latest submissions seem to be a promising start. Uh, though Greece is pretty much fast running out of money right now, and in fact, I don't think they can even pass legislation quick enough to, uh, to fulfil the uh, minimum objectives that the IMF were actually after. But nevertheless, the market's taken it to be quite positive. Uh, though the US 30 is down from its highs that it was reaching later on in the afternoon UK time uh, to sell off towards the end of the session. Now, it's ticking up again just now, just above 18,112, targeting 18,284. Uh, but there's still a lot of uh, things to, to talk about in regards to Greece. Uh, but certainly, um, there almost seems to be 80% of the way there at the moment. Uh, didn't cross any red lines with any of their um, pension pots. Uh, but I'm not entirely quite sure where they're getting the additional money from uh, in order to meet the uh, commitments that the IMF and the Eurozone are after. And there's also a big question about where the IMF is actually going to get the money to give to them. So uh, it's not completely done and dusted yet, but certainly it, it feels like the, there could be some sort of solution at the end. So looking at the UK 100, uh, European markets are absolutely smashing it. So they obviously must be pretty confident this is all going to go ahead and go through. Especially the Germany 30, it was uh, up almost 3%, 4% yesterday. And up percent again today. Looking at these gains just now, looks to be uh, potentially capped at 21 period SMA. Looking at 6 to 906 as a potential resistance. Bullish crossover in the MAC. The other technicals are relatively neutral. We recently had a, set, a buy signal on the slow stochastic, so there's actually a lot of room for further gains um, possible on the UK 100 once we get this uh, this grease thing out of the way. Uh, moving on to Japan 225, uh, I think you can pretty much say there that that is the highest that the Japan 225 has been in 15 years, I think. Um, had a great start to the day. In fact, if I've, got, I've got to go into a monthly time interval right here to be able to see it. Uh, and this is the highest that the Nikkei has been uh, since 1997. Uh, so that is a significant move. Uh, Japanese equity is looking very, uh, very interesting, uh, and the index, obviously, um, we've talked about this a, a number of times, and it's had a, a stellar two sessions. And it's it's a top end of its range, and we're still just going. It's not instantly reversing on the intraday charts. It's up 1.67% for the day, and it's still going higher as we speak. So 20,868. Uh, obviously, the market has closed right this second. There's little gaps in the Japanese uh, market uh, trading hours, but um, interesting market to uh, to look at. Um, but obviously, it is quite extended at the moment. So moving on to dollar yen, dollar yen pushed higher. So the USD actually gained momentum versus most major global currencies last night. Uh, again, cap that 21 period SMA. We need to get above 124.45 um, for dollar yen begins to look that a little bit more interesting. MACD histogram slowing down, so we could get a crossover at some point soon. And the other technicals are relatively neutral. So it needs to get above the 21 period SMA and 124.42, but dollar yen's coming back to life ever so slightly. Um, in regards to yesterday, uh, existing home sales, that's what it was, came in much better than expected. Uh, and uh, we had some European data, which uh, was okay. Uh, today we have a whole host of uh, PMI inflation data coming out for Germany and the Eurozone. Uh, and then Wednesday you've got the IMF, IMF, IFO business expectations data from Germany and the GDP for the US. So that, that one's going to be a real big one for the US economy. Uh, but that home sales basically meant that it's a solidifying that September potential uh, month for the first rate hike in the US. Crude consolidating again around 59.50, trading below $60 as we speak right now. To be honest, West Texas is not that exciting right now. Moving on to uh, onto gold on the back of the US home sales yesterday, it came off quite aggressively. We've got a bearish engulfing pattern and we are now resonating around the 11.86 potential support level. Any much further, any further downwards movement right there, it does open up a potential um, gateway to 11.37. Uh, especially with um, more macro data. GDP figures tomorrow uh, should be a big one for major USD FX pairs and for gold as well, depending obviously how it comes in. Moving on to euro dollar, uh, euro dollar has just broken that upwards trend line right now, uh, failed to uh, 
capitalize on the momentum elsewhere in the market following on from the Greece deal. Uh, we didn't get a break through the top of the ascending um, triangle formation. So uh, a break of that trend line is indicative of a potential move to one spot 11, uh, which also coincide with most other technical indicators as well. And that's more so on dollar strength at the moment, a, a resurgent dollar uh, rather than that euro weakness. Um, and then moving on to GBP USD, uh, a failure to break through one spot 59. I tried three times to be fair, failed to do it again yesterday. We're actually off the session lows already this morning, but one spot 57.43 is a potential support. We're in the middle of two ranges right now. Other technicals are overbought. The RSI just given a signal to sell, and the slow stochastic got a crossover, but it's got a break back through this 80% level before you get that signal to sell. So we've obviously already talked a little bit about the economic data. I expect Greece to still be quite a, a dominant factor. Chinese stock markets again are uh, a little bit under pressure uh, following their local holiday on Monday. Uh, they did move into positive territory at the start of their session, uh, but it still looks to be uh, pressured. So we'll keep an eye on the on the uh, Chinese stock market only because it's the second biggest economy in the world. Uh, it does have a bit of a knock-on effect in other regions as well. Um, keep your eye on the chart forum, lots of analysis there from Jasper Lawyers back from holiday now, Michael Hewson. Uh, make sure you make insights part of it going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.